Welcome to the Intimate Marriage Podcast, where I teach educated, successful couples how to have incredible, passionate relationships so that you can stop compromising and start feeling fully alive in your relationship. I'm Alexandra Stockwell, aka The Intimacy Doctor. I'm a physician, a relationship and intimacy coach, and I'm an intimate marriage expert. My husband and I have been married for 26 years. We have four children and full professional lives, and we've created an amazing marriage. I've shown hundreds of couples how to do so as well. So if you want to deepen your understanding of your own relationship and learn to access new heights of emotional, sensual, and erotic intimacy, you're in the right place. I will show you how. Now, let's dive in. Well, this is going to be a conversation that's very different from any other. I'm really glad to welcome Teresa and Blair Bass to the show, but before you even hear their voices, I need to just set the context. So Teresa contacted me on email and we went back and forth because it's clear that Teresa and Blair and I share a lot of the same values and both have a good portion of our lives devoted to helping couples have more intimacy and whatever that looks like for them. And only partway through our email communications was it very apparent that Teresa and Blair are devoted practicing Christians. And that became evident to me right away, I have to say. But what wasn't evident to them right away is that I am Jewish. So we are going to go forward into this wonderful conversation. And I just want you to know that we're going to go into realms related to religion and sex in Christian marriages and other topics, topics which I've never addressed. I generally speak about marriage and intimacy with an openness which accepts the deep humanity that is present in every relationship, knowing that the particular form of spirituality, religious practice, and related guidelines leave room for so much creativity, love, and connection, whether you have an explicit set of religious rules you're following or not. So that is where I'm coming from as we proceed into a conversation that I'm super excited to have. So right off the bat, welcome, Teresa. Welcome, Blair. Thank you. We're excited to be here. We appreciate the opportunity to speak with you and your audience. Yes, thank you. Yes, you're very welcome. I want to read from your bio because I really loved reading this. Um, The two of you are a Christian husband and wife team from North Carolina. Through one of the valleys several years ago in their marriage, because any long-standing marriage, of course, has hills and valleys. And you've been married over 20 years. How long have you been married? Actually, tomorrow is our anniversary, okay. and we will be 24 years tomorrow. Oh, congratulations. Well, before I proceed, any particular way you plan to celebrate 24 years? Uh, I don't know. Tomorrow, we may go have dinner. I did plan a date night this past Friday and took her out to dinner and we did dinner and a movie and some other things. And uh, so we kind of celebrated over the weekend a little bit. Yep. Okay. I totally connect with that approach. I think that's the thing you don't necessarily know when you get married, but at 24 years, sometimes keeping it simple is lovely. Well, before I go further, Teresa, what's something that What's something you know about marriage 24 years in that you didn't know when you started? Um, that is a loaded question. Um, I'm looking forward to the answer. <laughs> you put me on the spot a little bit. Um, oh gosh. I think, I mean, I guess the word that comes to mind probably is patience. Um, and and always learning, maybe. Um, I think we kind of early on, you, I think, you know, you have some 
Uh, you're pretty naive looking back now, but at the time, you know, you think you got it all figured out. We're all in love and everything's going to be good. And then kind of now 24 years looking back, I didn't know anything. <laughs> and, um, and, but I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still learning how, you know, my husband thinks and works and, you know, I mean, obviously there are, there are some predictions there, but you still learn, you're still learning, you know, you're learning how to communicate, you're learning how to be a better wife, you're learning, you know, how to help your husband. And, um, so yeah, that's what I would probably say. <laughs> well, I love that answer so much. And it reminds me and affirms and expands my gladness in interviewing the two of you. And I'll step back and just say a little bit that I have, um, my family and I, we lived in rural Southwest Kansas for two years from 2010 to 2012. And when we moved there, there were 40 churches and one bookstore. And within a few months of our living there, the bookstore went out of business. Mm -hmm. And many, many, many people who became good friends had never met a Jewish person before and didn't realize they had met a Jewish person until we'd already become friends. I know in some cases, they wouldn't have even become friends with us if they had known. But be that as it may, I had, uh, I have four children and my older two were teens. And so they were involved with the other teenagers there and exposed to all kinds of purity culture teachings. And maybe you'd like to define purity culture for listeners who are unfamiliar with that. I may add my twist, but Blair, how would you define purity culture? Well, uh, when I think of purity culture, when you say that, and I may not even define it uh, the way you may be thinking about it, um, but I would define purity culture as um, avoiding any type of sexual activity either prior to marriage or once you're in marriage um not having any sexual activity outside of marriage um so that's my view of purity culture okay well that's the purity culture that i'm familiar with but when you say it it sounds pretty straightforward okay no sex before marriage and once you're married only have sex with your spouse that seems pretty straightforward but as the mother of a teen girl becoming friends with other teen girls, it had a lot more to it, which the sh I could talk about it in terms of the inspiration and the beauty and what you might call the godliness, but I'm gonna right. actually for a moment talk about the shadow side of it, the part that concerned me, which is that one of the main ways particularly girls, learn to be good in the purity culture is to basically look at sex as sinful, to yep. make it something that they should not desire or think about or be interested in, that to be a girl who is sexually alive and interested is bad and sinful and damaging in the context of a relationship with God and to have no interest and kind of be above sexual inclinations is the finest way to be pure and then be ready for marriage. And anything I'm saying, I may well oversimplify, but there's certainly some truth in that. And the problem is that then once the wedding takes place, once the bond is formed, those same girls, there's a version of this with boys too, but I'm going to talk about it in terms of the girls, those same girls who have been conditioned, trained, had modeling and been rewarded for completely disconnecting from their sexuality and sensuality, now they're married and are expected to know how to be fully present and enjoy pleasure and open their heart and open their legs and really be present for what their Christian training has taught them is possible and necessary in a good marriage. And in my experience, I have not found that weddings 
actually have that transformational power. You don't. <laughs> Absolutely. I actually, the way you just defined that, I could not agree with you more. I don't think Teresa could either. Um, and and even from our perspective, and again, not trying to keep it Christian, but we started this store for for the reason you just described, which um, so I grew up in a Christian family. My father was a minister. Um, I, I, I've got ministers in our family. So I, I grew up in that environment. And, you know, even to this day, I believe one of the um, one of the negative impacts of churches is what you just described. Churches today don't cover the subject. Uh, some are starting to, but the majority of them don't. Uh, and if they do, it's all about the things you should not do. So that by the time you do become married, I, I agree with you. Women specifically it can be men, but I do think it targets women more. Um, you know, they're taught to not like it, to not want to have it, um, that it's bad, that it's wrong. And then we as husbands get all frustrated starting on our honeymoon night with why aren't they as freaky in the bed as we want to be, right? And I say this from the perspective of a father. I have two teenage daughters, right, that I'm concerned about. Um, and we do our best to try to teach them that sex is a great thing. It's a gift. It's meant to be enjoyed, but there's a time and a place for it to be enjoyed. So we don't want you to learn that it's bad. We want you to learn that it's great, right? Um, I think, um, I think, uh, and again, I'm, Staying away, trying to stay away a little bit from the Christian side of it, but I believe even well, in the Well, feel Bible. free. I don't want you to restrict yourself. I just wanted the context of the conversation to be clear to anyone listening. Great. Well, I think even in the Bible, it's extremely clear that you should be, um, that you should enjoy sex. I mean, just reading um, Song of Songs, right? It's all about um, drink from my cup until you know, it overflows. I mean, there's tons of imagery throughout the scriptures about sex and be fruitful and multiply and whatever. So I do believe the church as a as a foundation, not just one church, but the, the philosophy of church has has played a major part in our society of painting sex to be a bad thing. And um, and so we're trying to we want to be part of the movement that tries to change that uh, thought, that image. And whatever, and don't, and I'll be quiet. Like Teresa talk, but because I do talk a lot, I'm sorry. But we just experienced this in our own church, right? We were, we were members of a church, and we don't, we don't go promote what we do with our store, um, just publicly, just for our girls' um, protection, right? For their, for their reputation. Um, but somebody in our church, uh, this would happen about eight or nine months ago saw one of our social media posts and it became this big thing. And, and the leaders of the church asked us to step away from, um, from serving in the church. So you can still be members, but you can't serve here because sex is bad and we don't agree with the message you're trying to send. So um, it still, it happens to this day, happened to us, it'll happen to others. And I, I agree that's a bad message to be sent. Okay. Well, that's pretty powerful what you shared. And I want to just dial out because you referred to your store a few times. So I'm going to go back to read one of the things in the bio you sent me says, as we continued to learn the importance of God's design of sex and intimacy in a Christian marriage, we found there to be a lot of great resources talking about it, but very few helping us put it into practice. And that is the understatement of the of the Christian year. I mean, that is so spot on. And I really love that the two of you decided to do something about it. You opened your store. I'm going to ask you more details about it, but just to have all the facts out there that you have a store called Romantic Blessings, which is a sex toy shop for Christians, or I guess anyone can purchase, but it's a Christian sex toy shop. That's where the Christian With goes. Side, no nudity. And, yeah. Yeah. So that anyone who's a Christian can be very comfortable being a shopper at Romantic Blessings because they're not going to need to 
way through pornographic imagery in order to get to a simply right. packaged toy that might really allow a more Christian sex life in the way that you've painted it, Blair. So that's what we're talking about. Why don't you say a little bit more? I mean, how did you get to sex toys? I know yours is not the only Christian sex toy shop online, but how did you find your way to toys with whatever either one of you is open to sharing about that? And then we're going to get come back. I'm going to ask you questions about your church in case any listener had their attention peaked like I did. But how did you go from discovering whatever you discovered in your own bedroom to purchasing and then choosing to sell toys? I think you can answer that a little bit better. Okay. I mean, sure. It, was, um, yeah. trying it, started, to do it started with him, really. So I'm going to let him start the conversation. At least. Well, and um, I guess uh, to, just a quick little background. So in my in my other life, other career life, because I do have a full time job. So does Teresa outside of our we do our store kind of on the side a little bit. Um, but my background is in supply chain, inventory management, distribution, wholesale, manufacturing. Uh, I'm a, I do a lot of business executive consulting in that area. So it's kind of my background it has been for 30 years. So a couple of years ago, Teresa and I went through some struggles in our marriage, um, and as I think all couples do. And um, we had kind of grown apart a little bit. We were kind of living our own. We were so busy, kids, like everybody gets. I was work, travel. She was doing her thing. And we kind of got to a place where we we're more roommates than married couples. We we're just we were there, but we weren't. You um, and most other couples in the Western world, for sure. Right. So, um, you know, Teresa called me out on it, on some things and, and you know, and, and it, it was both of us. But um, so we decided to go do some counseling. Um, and uh, one of those things that started, she brought in a podcast uh, from a preacher in Georgia that she had listened to, wanted me to listen to it. Of course, I had no time for it, didn't want to do it, uh, but we did. And it, that piqued my interest. So we started listening to other podcasters. Um, around marriage, you know, trying to learn how to communicate and, and, and work on our marriage. Um, and one of those podcasters had a forum that if you paid some, some membership, you could join their forum. And this is where it really came about. The, the forum, in the forum, uh, this podcaster talked about how to improve your sex life through Christian marriage and all that. But uh, so I was in the forum and a lot of people in the forum were like, hey, love that episode. You're saying we should try this, but we don't know where to go shop for toys or do this. Or, and so I kind of felt this calling. I believe it's a calling from God that put on my heart. But I felt this calling that, hey, there's all these great podcasts out there. But when people are telling you, go try this, go do this. Everybody's kind of saying a lot of people are saying we don't know where to go shop to do that. And because these podcasts had helped our marriage, I wanted to do something to give back. And with my background in manufacturing distribution, I thought, hey, why don't we open a sex toy store without thinking of what all the ramifications of that could be for us personally, um, clearly anyway. Uh, and so I just used something that my background is comfortable with, inventory management distribution, and a need I thought I heard in the, in the forums. And I talked to her about, hey, let's try this, right? I, I think we're being called to do this, and it's something I want to try. So, yeah. Yeah, that's how well, it started. Well, what was your first response to hearing, <laughs> hey, honey, let's yeah. open an online Christian sex toy shop? Yeah, I would say probably at first it was a little a little, surpri a little surprising, yes. Um, but um, we have been wanting to do sort of a business together. And so I was like, okay, if he's so passionate about this, um, I'll I'll get on board and see how this goes because I mean you know I agreed with him that there there wasn't a lot out there this type of thing out there for people you know to go to but I also I do remember early on telling him that I would like it to be more than just a toy shop like I want resources and I want you know other things I want it to be bigger than that and we have 
gradually gotten to that point. Um, and so, uh, yeah. And so, I, and when we went through what we went through with the church, it all, it really almost, um, you know, put fuel on the fire, um, for me at least too. And it really opened up my eyes, um, into that, you know, this is a conversation that should be, that we should be having. And there shouldn't be any shame around it because it is a good thing. It's to me, it's just after, or over the years of doing this, I've gotten more comfortable talking about it, obviously. And, and definitely six months ago when we went through it with the church, it, I even, it just really took fire. But to me, it, I, I just don't understand how like society doesn't really talk about it, church or no church it's happening. People are doing it, but we're not talking about it. And if we do talk about it, it's talked about in a, you know, sort of a negative way almost. And to me, that really bothers me the most because we should be talking about it in a really great positive way. And we should be talking, we're talking about everything else. Why are we not talking about that? You know, talking about intimacy and sex. I mean, if it's done in the right context with your married partner, then there should be, we should be talking about it. You know, we're talking about everything else. Why can't we talk about this? You know, and especially with young girls and young married couples, I mean, they needed the tools too to, you know, they struggle at the beginning of their marriages too, you know, and, um, you know, if we talked about it more, I don't think those struggles would be as prevalent as they are. I deeply agree with you. Although, one thing you said caught my attention, you know, there should be no shame about it. That's yeah. not really how shame works. It doesn't follow the shoulds. It doesn't okay. just go away when we right. think there's no rationale for it. It's just not how shame functions. It is kind of sneaky, like a silent toxic gas that is hard to perceive and eradicate. However, um, I love that you're contributing to the conversation this way. I do want to say that as someone who has wanted to be able to serve anyone who wants to deepen the intimacy and enhance their marriage in order to have better sex, in order to have a happier, more bonded marriage and a family life that reflects it, like this is how we create a better, more connected, more purposeful less lonely society is having children learn like i really feel like one of the best things i can do for children is teach their parents how to have wonderful relationships that goes so far and i know your your mission is in alignment with that and so i just want to say i know that there are christian sex toy shops romantic blessings being yours and the uh, link will be in the show notes for anyone who'd like to check it out there also are sex toy shops specifically by and for Orthodox Jews and Hasidic Jews, also um, for Muslims. So anyone who's listening, if if you would like a Christian sex toy shop, well, Romantic Blessings is calling your name, but if you have you or you have friends or if you're a physician and you have patients who have other religious practices, like there's a way I think one of the saddest things is that the porn industry has a monopoly on communicating information, which regardless of religious or spiritual orientation or lack of it, most of porn is portraying something false anyway, never mind the moral elements, if those are something that are significant. So how do you handle that with your church? What, what, what did you say? Well, that was the big thing that they couldn't get past is that because th to their, to them, we're contributing to the porn industry. Right. But, you know, we're not, you know, it would be easy to say like, okay, we'll just stay in our little box. Right. And do our thing. But I think we're all, I th we personally think that we're all called to kind of go outside of our box a little bit and meet the people where they are. Right. And we're trying to not only, you know, send, you know, the message that 
sex is good within the marriage, right? Sex is great, but we think it's only right within the marriage. And that's the conversation we want to try to continue to have and promote. And, you know, unfortunately, if we could control the distributors, you know, and use the, you know, the right distributors, distributors um, that aren't in the porn industry, of course we would do that, but we can't. Unless you become a Christian sex toy manufacturer. Right. Yes, which, right. Yeah. But that we don't feel like that's where we, you know, are called. But, yeah. um, you know, so I see. So part of the issue is that by supporting the companies that are making the toys you sell, you're indirectly um, supporting the porn industry. Yes. OK. That. But we we pushed back on and said, well, don't you buy things from Amazon or don't you buy things from you know, any, anywhere, right? right? They're all supporting that as well, just as much as we are. So like, you know, don't throw stones, you know. Yeah, I liked how some of the leaders of the church as they're wearing their Nikes made in China, who, yeah. by the way, kills and murders Christians for practicing their faith, are yeah. telling us yeah. that what we do is support our money is, you know. So um, I think one of the, the big problems a lot of people have with the church is they see the the human hypocrisy in a lot of things. Um, and so, you know, that's a hard conversation to have, especially with the leaders of the church. And, you know, they, they believe they're right. I'm not here to tell them they're wrong. Why not? Well, because uh, there's a there's a verse in, uh, I believe it's Ephesians, that says it may be legal, but that doesn't mean it's beneficial, meaning Everything may be legal for me to do, but it may not be productive for me. And so we believe the sex toys and whatever else is a personal decision between the couple, right? If you believe toys are wrong and bad for your marriage, then they're wrong and bad for your marriage. They're not for me to tell you that you have to do them and they're right. Um, we believe you should be educated about it, right? And um and and that type of thing. But if you want to just throw up a wall and say they're not right for me, we talked about it, whatever, um, then, you know, that's your choice. And um, if anything, I believe in freedom of choice and freedom of religion. And, and, you know, it's not for me to tell another how to do that. But I would point out that even, and I pointed this out to our church leaders, that even if you do believe it's a sin, which they obviously did in this case, um, actually, the preacher of the church did not. We told him about this story two years ago when we started it, and he was all for it. He wanted to share it with his other preacher friends, and he invited me to become a leader in the church. He invited us to serve, do all kind of things. It only became an issue when another member of the church saw one of our social podcasts and brought it up. In a negative way. In a negative way. And then all of a sudden, he had an issue with it, although he'd known about it for years. So it was... I understand. Yes. It wasn't handled the best way. But my point to him was, uh, again, this is kind of religious, but hey, if if Jesus did not come here to deal with all the people that were not sinning, and we're all sinners, so it's everybody. But I mean, if you look, if you read through the scriptures, who did he try to go witness to and, and help? You know, it was the prostitutes. It was the lame. It was the Jews. It was the Gentiles. It was everybody. Right. And so he said, be like him. So are we to stay away from the porn industry if that's what it is? Uh, because they're in the porn industry, or should we be should we the be life. having should we be having this conversation? And you know, one of the my favorite things you probably could have said when you introduced us was it was readily apparent to you that we are Christians. And it's not because we we were overtly talking to you about Christianity. I don't think we did at all talk to you about that, really. Um, but that's how we feel in the porn industry. Maybe we can just be a light. We can be a seed, and we don't have to talk about it. And the thing that makes our store Christian safe, we believe, is what she said. You know, I don't care if you're Christian or not Christian. There are millions of couples where the wife does not want the husband to go buy her something at Victoria's Secrets because she doesn't want him lusting or fantasizing about the Victoria's Secret models, right? Has nothing to do with Christianity. Um, and so that's what we try to present on our store. 
here's a sh- safe shopping place you can come, Christian or not, um, that if you're worried about imagery and you just want to not fantasize, not have lust in your marriage, whatever, we give you that safe environment to do that. Okay, so let's say someone's listening. Maybe they've been married for 35 years. I'm thinking of you, if that's you. And they're like, you know, I've heard of sex toys. Where should I start? And I'm wondering if, I don't know if you have a chat service on the website or not, but regardless, I know, I'm sure, I just infer that you must give good customer service. So if someone asks like, what's a good starter toy for a heterosexual couple? Do you have an answer, Teresa? I do. Uh, do you do I have an answer? Yeah, um, you might have different answers. So let's find out. We probably okay. do. Well, I would say that we have a blog. We have a blog with lots of posts on there um, that would be a good start. There's a couple of good ones on there. Um, and we and we are always, op- our door is always open to anybody who wants to ask us questions or need some help. So personally, if they want to um, we even have a telephone number and an email so they can reach out to us that way. Um, I mean, as far as an actual toy. Yeah, an actual toy. <laughs> I mean, I would typically say just a vibrator, right? You know, the buzz buzz. The famous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just like, you know, a very basic vibrator um, would probably be the first. Okay, and I'm going to push it a little further since we want this to be educational. When you say a basic vibrator, what makes it basic versus not? It, that it vibrates, that it vibrates. I mean, you know. You mean no other functions, it just vibrates. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, I mean, you got to start somewhere, right? I mean, there's a long list of other uh, features you can add to that. But to not overwhelm a person, I would say just something that vibrates, honestly. Yeah. And- I think that's a wonderful first toy also because... You, it it can be awkward enough to start a new adventure in the bedroom and to not have to figure out like what the different functions are. Like you don't want it to feel like a console of an airplane. It can just be like a light switch where it's on and off. So that's another reason that I think is a great place to start. Okay, and what were you going to say, Blair, in terms of a well, first sex toy? So her answer is great because whatever she says is always awesome. Of support. <laughs> okay, um, I, I, I will, affirm I that. that. Just from a resource standpoint, I'm surprised she didn't mention this because she's done a lot of work on this. Uh, but we do have a lot of video learning resources on there. We actually have a page called I'm New, Where Do I Start? And there's a lot of videos there that you can go watch and it walks you through kind of where to start and how to do that. And they're clean. <laughs> Everything on our store is clean. Yeah. Clean. And so, by clean, you mean not pornographic? Correct. 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 So, um, but if it was one toy, I would suggest somebody to start with. If we're talking toys itself, I think there's some other tools I might recommend, but a toy, and some people don't think of this as a toy, but it's big. I would say lube, lubricant. Um, I think it's the most basic. A lot of people already do it. Some don't, but there's no toy. There's no play. There's nothing you can do where wetter's not better, as we say in the industry. <laughs> right? So, um, And I do you always... have like flavored lubes or different? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes. <laughs> we have flavored lubes, we have heated lubes, we have cooling. scented lubes, you, yeah, yeah. cooling, yeah. sensate. I mean, we have it, sure. Yeah. Okay, Absolutely. you know what? I really like that, Blair, because when when I'm coaching, I like to start with a step that's going to bring success. And so I know that there are many of you listening where, like, of course you'd be comfortable doing this. And maybe you want me to ask what's the most exotic toy at the store, and I will. But there also are lots of people who, one could say that marriage is a collection of habits. And if your habits in your marriage haven't ever included sex toys, then no matter what exotic vacations you've gone on, no matter what your degrees, no matter what kind of car you you drive, it's a big deal to create a new habit in the bedroom. And I hadn't thought of it before, so I really love it, but I can see how lube would be perfect because 
You can start by putting it on your hand fully dressed. Like it can be the least confronting, most accessible next move to create new sensations. And then you can experiment with how to make those sensations more pleasurable. So I really love that. And I am going to go ahead and ask what is, it doesn't have to be the least basic toy that you sell, but what's one that isn't really basic that maybe someone who has a lot of experience with toys and has a little collection in a basket lined with velvet, what might they add to their collection? Well, I'll let you answer first. What would you? Uh, well, my new favorite is the air pulsing um, vibrators and the ones that, and I haven't tried it yet, but they heat it, they heat up as well. So there's new features that are coming out that um, intrigue me. And one I have tried is the air pulsing. So I would definitely uh, add that to the list if they haven't yet, for sure. Okay, <laughs> fantastic, Teresa. What about you, Blair? Well, if I was answering what I think is the most, uh, everybody loves the word kinky, the kinkiest one out there or whatever. I don't know if it's one toy. I think it's a collection. Uh, I've spent the last six or eight months really trying to broaden our toy collection to um, to get people into role playing because I think that can be a big deal. Did you um, say so rope we, playing or role, role playing? Role, role like because they're both the, pretty great, but you're saying well, there role you playing, okay? But uh, we we have a lot of uh, what people would call BDSM toys. We have cuffs. Um, uh, we do carry one type of rope, but I try to stay away from that because rope, if you don't know what you're doing, could be very dangerous. But we do have cuffs. Um, we have blindfolds, paddles, props, whips. Um, we have costumes. We have boots, leather boots, and I mean, we tr- and wigs. And we try to, you know, um, there's nothing in any marriage, Christian or not, where fantasy and role playing between the couple can't be great. And um, a lot of our competitor Christian stores don't carry that type of product. And, and so that may be where, to answer your question, maybe the kinkiest things we have that, that gets a little more into um, not just vibrators and lube and lingerie, which we all we have tons of those if you want them. Um, but we get into some of the other uh, more fantasy and sensation play as well. Okay, I'm going to share something that I recently read about Queen Elizabeth. I have four children and I'm in my 15th year of homeschooling. Uh, One is in graduate school, one is in the workforce, and one uh, just started public high school last year as a 10th grader, but I have one at home. And so with my 10-year-old, I pulled a book off my shelf of biographies about Queen Elizabeth to read it to him in the context of her passing. And the book itself was written about 20 years ago, it was, um, or maybe more, I don't remember, but Princess Diana is just mentioned, but none of the turmoil and challenges that that later were part of Queen Elizabeth's life around her family life. Anyway, I don't need to be so vague. I just mean with the divorce and Diana's death and so forth, this book was written before that. And it tells the story of how Prince Philip was on a trip for a few months. And this was obviously before the internet and ways of keeping track of people when they're at a distance. And so rumor came back that while he was away, he had left clean shaven and while he was away, he grew a beard. And so Queen Elizabeth arranged for her and her staff to all be wearing beards when he came home. (laughs) And so we know her as this, proper emotionless woman and that wasn't specifically sexual play but it's a way to bring like a whole other energy and in their case maybe it was into the front of windsor castle who knows where she and her staff were wearing their beards when prince philip arrived with his but there's something in that moment and the twinkle in everyone's eyes and his confusion and then open-heartedness that is certainly something beautiful to bring into the bedroom. And then I want to tell a completely different story, which is that I had a friend uh, whose child was my daughter's age when um, in the first few elementary years she went to school. And 
they were a very religious family and her husband was a good man who participated as a young man would in purity culture. And when they got married and she was undressed, she is a beautiful, attractive redhead with red pubic hair. And he almost had a heart attack because he didn't know that women have pubic hair. And his uh, not being sinful and thinking about sex had meant that he really didn't know anything about women's anatomy. If he was surprised by pubic hair, we can be sure he didn't know what a clitoris was. All and right. so there's a way in which my heart is just warmed to know the mission and the way that you're bringing it and the people that you can reach specifically because of who the two of you are as Christians. And with that, I'd like to pivot into the question I ask everyone I interview, because right in line with what you said, Teresa, about marriage as an opportunity for ongoing learning, I absolutely believe that intimate relationship is the ultimate vehicle for personal growth. So I would love to ask you, Teresa, what have you learned about yourself as a result of specifically being married to Blair? Um, well, this may not sound good, but I think it is good. It, at least I look at it as a good thing is that I, I know I have weaknesses and I'm okay with that because he helps with those weaknesses. That sounds so, pretty fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, I, and I'm okay with, I'm okay, you know, like. I don't look at it as a bad thing. Like I know I have weaknesses and I'm okay with that, but I know that, you know, he, he compensates for my weaknesses. And I think my strengths, you know, can compensate for his weaknesses. And I think just realizing that I have those, I think for so many years, I may have known I have weaknesses, but I didn't want to admit it or, you know, say them out loud or whatever. But as I've gotten older, I would say that, I've come to terms with those weaknesses and I'm okay with that, you know, especially being married to him, you know. I think that is exquisite, Teresa. Self-acceptance is, is so powerful. It's its own aphrodisiac. And yeah. I love what you've just shared. <laughs> well, what about you. you, Blair? What have you learned about yourself as a result of being married to Teresa? <laughs> so, I don't know if you'd say the same thing, right? That's <laughs> a deep and foreboding question. As we look to celebrate our 24th tomorrow, yes. it's going to be beautiful how I answer so I come to the 25th, right? Um, but no, I would, uh, a, a, a little bit along the same lines, but I, I've learned um, I've learned a lot about my flaws and um, and good things about me that I don't give myself credit for because she does for me. Um, but, but, you know, they always tell you some, uh, you always hear the fact that you're, you can learn more from your critics than you can your praisers. Right. And so, um, I wouldn't necessarily call her a critic all the time, but, um, it, you know, I've learned, I'm a very stubborn person, uh, at times I've learned that I don't always pay attention, uh, to a lot of things at time, which I get reminded of all the time. You know, it's one of those things that's like, Hey, let's talk. And my mind just immediately zones out. And I didn't hear the next 30 minutes of whatever. And I'll answer with, what did you, what did you say? Um, so, you know, learning those things about myself, they, they help not only in marriage, but they help me at work. Cause I know if I'm doing it here, you know, I catch myself at times at work, just zoning out of conversations and, and things like that. So I think, uh, you know, learning how to continually improve yourself and, and those types of things and that, Kind of what she said, it, it's we're all born sinful. We're all born not perfect. Nobody is perfect. I don't care who they are. And so I've had to learn in marriage that, you know, accepting things, loving, getting up and loving every day, doing everything. It's actually a choice. It's not a feeling. It's more of a choice. And, you know, things can get bad in a marriage. And the way you stay together is you have to choose that you want to work on and stay together. And so um, I think her helping me 
realize some of those things that I can't just lotty die go through marriage and life. I have to choose to to get over things and do things and work on things to get better. So, well, thank you so much for yeah. This has been a really amazing conversation with religious, cultural ramifications, personal ramifications, and sales ramifications. So <laughs> by all means, click the link, check out their store. If you have questions, reach out. It's clear that both Teresa and Blair are approachable and good hearted. And um, I didn't ask you this first, so you can tell me if you want to be a no, but I feel like saying if you are a Christian and you want to bring this conversation to your church, I'm going to recommend that you invite Blair and Teresa to support you in that endeavor. We, we would love to do that. We actually have um, some resources on our site about how to, we can partner with churches, pod, you know, public like yourself, other groups. So yeah, we would, we would love that. And we think it'd be great because churches need to be having these conversations. That's right. Well, thank you both so much. Thank you. Yes, thank you. We're going to add an extra bit to this interview. We did finish, but Teresa and Blair have kindly offered you, my listeners, a coupon co code. So when you go to Romantic Blessings, the link to get there will be uh, in the show notes, or you can go straight to romanticblessings.com. Use coupon code IMP, that's for Intimate Marriage Podcast, IMP10. Anything you want to add that's so generous? Yeah, uh, I would just add, just use that at checkout time. It will apply to your entire order, except for a few product lines. Uh, we do have some manufacturer restrictions that we're not allowed to offer discounts on a couple of their products uh, or they'll pull the product line for us from us. Uh, but other than that, it'll apply to everything else on the store and just put it in at, um, at checkout time and, and you'll get your discount. Okay, so get your basic toy or get your sophisticated toy and be sure to use IMP10. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with a friend and please leave a rating and a review. And if you're ready to deepen your relationship and create a truly intimate, delicious, and vibrant marriage, head over to the Work With Me page at alexandrastockwell.com and choose the program that's right for you.